Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Hi, welcome to the Christmas Time in the City podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Chris. Before we get started, be sure to follow us on social media. We're Christmas Time in the City podcast on Instagram and Facebook and at Xmas and City Pod on Twitter. Also, feel free to email any questions or comments to us at Christmas Time in the City Podcast at gmail.com. Christmas time has come and gone. It's over. All the decorations are officially away after this weekend. Yep. So what's, Back to normal. What's next? You know, I guess... Uh, winter is next. Yeah. It's time to celebrate winter. Yes, winter is here. But just because the holidays are over doesn't mean the fun has to stop. And that being said, let's get into it. Winter in New York City. A poem. In 85 parts. <laughs> 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 Even though the holidays have come and gone, there's still plenty to do in the winter in New York City. Fast-paced city is covered with snow and festivities in January and February. A lot of the Christmas lights, Christmas trees, and Christmas decorations at retail stores are still up, making the city all the more beautiful. Here are a few more things that make visiting New York City in the winter a ton of fun. The multiple ice rinks spread across the city are open through the winter. You can also explore areas such as Central Park, where you can cross-country ski, sled, or just enjoy the snow. In addition, events like the Winter Antique Show and Winter Jazz Fest make for a great experience. New York sees extremely few tourists in January, so if you're good to brave the cold, there's no better time to wander around the city. You'll have it all to yourself. January offers a great bargain on airfares and hotels. Also, to attract tourists and locals alike, the shops, restaurants, hotels offer post-holiday discounts. In fact, you can even grab a Broadway show for a much cheaper price. January is usually the coldest month in New York City, even though it was 65 degrees the day we recorded this episode of the podcast. As the month progresses, the temperature descends further. The average maximum daytime temperature is around 37 degrees Fahrenheit, and the average nighttime temperature drops to 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Daylight is observed for an average of 10 hours, out of which barely 5 hours see bright sunlight. Central Park adorns a winter wonderland avatar in January. Apart from being a vision in white, the snow-clouded park offers ample number of activities, from a simple self-guided stroll to guided tours, from ice skating rinks to skiing or sledding hills, from riding the carousel into building a snowman. Cozy up with art that spans over 5,000 years at one of the most famous museums in the world, the Metropolitan Museum of Art of New York City, a.k.a. the Met. The largest art museum in the United States displays over 2 million works of art. That's one of the best ways of escaping the January winds, is to enter the enclosed world of museums and galleries. A New York icon, the American Museum of Natural History, spans over 40 exhibition halls, exhibiting 32 million specimens and artifacts depicting diversity of Earth's species, life in the ancient past, and the universe. We've got a lot more to say about this one, but we'll have to wait for another episode to get into the details. For now, just take our word for it, the American Museum of Natural History is worth the trip. The city of New York has a number of defining features. Central Park is one, and Broadway is another. If musicals are your thing, then coming to New York is like attaining the holy grail for you. Broadway is the global hotspot for everything related to musicals and performance art. Make sure you catch a Broadway musical on your trip to New York. You can even score a discount during the first 10 days of February. Mass transit is a convenient and inexpensive way to get around New York City. The five boroughs are well connected via various MTA transport means. Subways are the fastest way to travel within the city. It operates all day, every day, for the most part. You can opt for public buses as well. They can offer you a scenic, albeit slower way to reach your destination. The Roosevelt Island Tram is another scenic way of getting around. The city also has a famously large fleet of yellow taxi cabs that you may opt to use if you have a lot of luggage. Last but not least, bikes are available for hire if you want to be in charge of your own travel. You may also take a ferry across the river to Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and New Jersey. You might enjoy long walks in winter, but snow might not be that friendly. In order to cover as much ground as possible while staying warm and to enjoy the scenic beauty of the city, take the hop on, hop off bus tour to get downtown and uptown from wherever you want. While New Yorkers take their subway rides seriously, as they like to stick to their schedules, some have invented the no pants subway ride. That's right, the no pants subway ride. This annual Improv Everywhere aims to brighten fellow riders' commutes and confuse unsuspecting tourists. The volunteers ride the subway all clad in their winter gear, except for pants. It's usually held in the middle of January. The drawback of winters 
Our daylight hours are fairly short. Make sure you plan your visits and make your reservations beforehand so that you get to see more of the sun. New York goes all out to celebrate the starting month of the year. With events like Restaurant Week and Hotel Week, it offers huge discounts. The retail shops and malls also join in to accommodate the travelers and their shopping sprees. So we hope that gives you a few ideas of things you can do when you're in New York City during the winter. And with that, it's time for our new segment. It's time for the news. So this is one of our new segments. We're going to be talking about the news in New York City, especially if it pertains to the holidays. Yeah, we uh, found some articles that we thought were interesting, and we want to share them with you. Yeah, so so what's in the news? Let's get to the first article. Domino's was selling $30 pizzas in Times Square during the ball drop. $30 pizzas. $30. But there were a lot of people that were on board. So it was uh, Domino's in Midtown, and they decided... Presumably close to Times Square. Yeah, close to Times Square. They've been doing this, I think it said, for 15 years. It's weird that this article is only now coming out, like people care about it now. Yeah, it's this new woke culture. <laughs> yeah, all about that pizza, man. <laughs> this pizza woke culture. <laughs> people were very into it. They sold over 50 pizzas before 6 p.m. Before 6 p.m. And that was mm-hmm. another six hours to go. <laughs> yeah. There was one couple that had mentioned that they had been there since noon. And so they bought a pizza and they were going to ration it out until midnight. <laughs> That's fun. That's a fun vacation. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but no one seemed to be mad that they were more than double the price of a Domino's pizza. But, I mean, when you're hungry, you're hungry. What else are you going to do? You know, I'd probably be happy, too, if someone walked by with pizza. And I would probably would have paid that. Yeah. Everything in New York is overpriced anyway. So that's, you got to assume that Domino's is going to be $30 for yeah. A pizza. It, it probably tasted delicious. I'm sure it did. And it was part of the experience, you know? Yeah. So you just like, 30 bucks. We had pizza in the middle of Times Square during the ball drop. That was our, our night. They could like, use the box to, uh, like, to cover their head from all the rain. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was raining. Is it so ever they not rain easily... during New Year's Eve? Mm, I don't know. It definitely <laughs> rained last year, too. <laughs> Crazy. So what else is there? The next one is about Bill de Blasio. Bill de Blasio, the mayor the Bill mayor. de Blasio. Mayor of New York City likes toasted bagels. This is his latest New York City food snafu. I'm so glad we're talking about this. Yeah, I think other people need to understand what we're talking about here. If you're not from New York City, you might not understand why it's such a big deal. But people are very touchy about their their bread here for a good reason. So it's delicious. It's already made warm on site. Yeah. Toast it. Already warm. So a you fresh don't need to bagel toast you don't need to toast. A no. lender's bagel that you got from the freezer section at your grocery store. You toast it. You want to toast that. <laughs> but yeah, the, the bread here is really good. That's why pizza is so good here. That's why bagels are good here because of the water. Mm-hmm. So people were livid, to say the least. Right? Yeah. It originated from a tweet that he posted on Twitter. The tweet was, whole wheat toasted extra cream cheese. That was it. So people were responding back on Twitter. Uh, One person at Spike McManus was saying, in the 20 years I've lived across the street from Essa Bagel and they never had a toaster and would scoff if you asked. The best bagels on earth don't need no toasting. So along those lines Mm -hmm. were the responses. And I thought it was really funny because he deleted the tweet and then reposted it, but without the word toasted in it. (laughs) As if people did not recognize that he had posted that. (laughs) (laughs) Like, man, people already are talking about it. Deleting it and reposting it isn't going to help your case. Yeah, um, that's funny. And this isn't new for him. He always comes out with some random way to eat food or... The pizza thing, right? Yeah, he ate pizza with a fork and knife, which I've done in the past if it's like a messy pizza, but I don't think I've done it here. No, not like a, been another... a sloppy New York slice. You don't no. eat with a knife and fork. No. So that was I thought that was pretty funny that this is just adding on to his multiple fractions. Man, this guy. <laughs> who knows? Yeah. I don't know. To each his own, I guess. But if you're visiting New York, get a bagel. Get a bagel, not toasted. Toast it. <laughs> Trust us. Mm-hmm. Our next story is the annual polar bear plunge. It brings in an icy start to the new decade. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. So I, need to, I think I might need to do this. I would agree with that. I think you need to do it, too. <laughs> oh, man. No solidarity. <laughs> no, I would probably do it with you. But keep this in mind. Okay. Okay. This year, not too bad. It was 37 degrees. That sounds very cold. We it's should we should talk about what it is. What is the polar bear plunge? Okay, let me. Yeah, let's give a little heads up. Um, 
thousands of people are out there. It's on Coney Island. So basically, they just run into the water in the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> and it's freezing on, outside. On New Year's Day. On New Year's Day at 1 o'clock, people are out there. It tends to get pretty crowded. I think there were like thousands of people this year. Mm -hmm. uh, but there have been times where there's less when it's very cold out. For example, in 2018, it was seven degrees out. I wouldn't do it that year. Seven degrees. I can't even imagine. So I'm assuming there wasn't thousands of people out that day. No. I mean, the people that did it that day, they have a, a good story. Sure. The Coney Island Polar Bear Plunge is now in its 116th year. So it's the oldest winter bathing event in the U.S. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Uh, but everyone that does it says it's invigorating. It makes you feel reborn. So there's only positive things said about it. So I'm about it. We can aim for that as long as it's not a seven degree. Yeah, day. if it's really cold that day, we'll look at the forecast. Yeah. When I it gets closer, we'll do the person. 10 day forecast and then we'll <laughs> decide go. if we want to do that. Yeah, so stay tuned next year. Yeah. Around Christmas time, we'll let you know if we're about to do it. And then maybe one day, once we've done it a couple of times, we might be able to do the seven degree one. But I can't do that as my first one. That's you have to much. ease into it. Gotta ease into it. Okay. So what else is there in the news? Our next story is about New Yorkers. So this recent survey came out that New York is the rudest city in America. Do you okay. agree with that? No. Why don't you agree with that? I, we talked about it a little bit on a previous podcast, I think, and maybe a question in the listener mail. I don't think so. I would go out on a limb and say that New York has some of the rudest tourists. There you go. I feel like that's what a lot of people had said that are from New York. Not only did they say, you know... They I, might... I, I th it might be unintentionally rude, but it's rude mm -hmm. nonetheless. There's certain... Let me paint a picture for you. Let's say, hypothetically, there's a thousand people on every subway train in New York City during rush hour or any time during like the, the business day. There's probably a hundred people on every street at any given time during the same period of time. Um, and then there's maybe 50 so people trying to get on and off buses at any given time as well. So when, when uh, tourists that may not really have an idea of what it is to be in New York and how to operate and how to function, because this is a pretty well-oiled machine at this point, so when cogs get thrown in that don't know, understand it, that there's certain, you have, you have to move off the side, don't get in people's way when they're commuting, when they're going places, because it almost, just to stop a train, for example, because you don't know if you're on the right train, there's a sense of entitlement that I think New Yorkers pick up on that I feel like they don't necessarily approve of. And usually that's when they start to get aggressive towards other people. Let's say that you had a long day at your job and you're driving home and someone blocks three lanes of, of traffic on the highway and gets out and looks at their map to try to figure out where they're going. <laughs> imagine, and then imagine that happening five or six more times. <laughs> eventually your patience is gonna run Yeah, <laughs> eventually you're gonna start, start asking why people don't understand where they're going. That's what the frustration is. I think that's that can be amended by just being aware and being a good tourist and being a good visitor to the city. There's certain social constructs that we've already come up with at this point where you have to kind of be fluid and if you're gonna stop in the middle of the sidewalk don't do that move yeah. off to the side just don't get in people's way i would say people are friendly though like if, if you're lost you can ask for help and usually more people are more than willing to help you or at least point you in the right direction so i think out of context like in the context that, that i think the survey is coming from the perspective the survey is coming from people are assuming that it's the new yorker's fault i don't necessarily know if it would be yeah, I would agree with that. That's fair. You know, when this article is talking about basically the same thing, that New Yorkers are notoriously short on patience for slow walkers, tourists, people who wear big backpacks on the subway, mm -hmm. things like that. But it's stuff that gets into your daily routines. But also New Yorkers, I think, are, are very caring about their neighbors. Not necessarily knowing everyone that lives next to you, kind of knowing your neighbor. But Not they in take our apartment building. We don't talk to anyone in our apartment building. I talk to people in this apartment building. Oh, never mind. <laughs> he does. I just don't talk to people in the apartment building. I'm that but, guy. Yeah. But we would, you take care of each other. You know, if you saw someone in distress, normally New Yorkers will look out for you now, you know. So you never know. It's just, it depends how you look at it, I think. Maybe just like the surface, people would think we're ru we're rude, but I don't think that's we're the just case. trying to get through our day. Yeah. And, but we're looking out for you if if something happens, right? Sure, Does that makes sense. That works. And that's it for the news. Which brings us to our next segment. You've got listener mail. 
I actually really like that intro. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> I was really proud of it. Mm, yeah. It took way too long to do that little thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember you making it and being very excited about it. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> listener mail. We have some some listener mail. We've uh, begged and pleaded for you on social media to ask us questions, which you always do, which is always very nice. We have a couple we're going to go through today. First one is, is New York City really as dirty as people say it is? Probably not mm. as dirty, but it's definitely dirty for sure. I mean, there's sure. a lot of people that live here. So what do you expect? Yeah. Even more trash. people visit on any given day, too. People commute in, whether it's be for work or for vacation. Yeah, or, so there's always a lot of people. Mm. So, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty dirty sometimes. But, I mean, that's part of the charm, I suppose. If you don't want to see that kind of stuff, then maybe go somewhere that isn't New York City. <laughs> yeah, it's, it has grit. You know? It has grit. It has grit. And I think uh, there's different times where the dirty might be a little worse like during the summer when all the trash is out it's hot so the garbage smells more yeah um, but in it's winter like, the garbage isn't out all, the garbage isn't out all the time no and i think that's where people get confused because they see the garbage and like oh my gosh those piles are huge yeah. you always have garbage out here there's a very specific time slot that garbage has to be out so it's out at a certain hour and it's gone by the morning it's not really that big of a deal i yeah. think it just shocks people different, see how much it is different areas time. and different sides of the road and they had yeah. different different trash days so at any given time there's probably trash on some street that you may be walking on yeah but, but it's, it's not a good there system in place so it's it, it's not as bad as it might seem to people that don't realize that sure. that stuff isn't going to be there for very long so yeah so i would say it's not as dirty as it's you not as it dirty is. as you probably think it is but it is probably dirtier <laughs> mm -hmm. that's what happens than... when you get this many people together <laughs> yeah that's what happens all right so the next question is what's the weirdest thing you've seen on the subway Oh no, I, I feel like this is going to bring out trauma. <laughs> oh no. I would say the most recent weird thing that I've seen is also pretty gross. There was a gentleman who was living basically in the subway. I'm sure he was living on all the over train. the place, but he was on the train in this moment. Okay. So all of his stuff was there. <laughs> you're living wherever you're at. You're living wherever you're at. He was on the train, so he's living, right? And uh, he was sleeping on about like three benches and sure. all of his stuff there. No, well, that's not uncommon. That's whatever. Do your thing. It might be cold outside. But, you know, a big stretch later. I was on my way to work, by the way. So people aren't like business dudes and all that around us. Big stretch. Wakes up. Decides to, like, stand up and kind of squish in between. There's, like, a, it's like the, the subway that has the L seating. So there's three and then two seats that kind of face it. So he kind of shrinks down in between those two seats and then just like pees. And you can just like see the pee like running under the seat. On the train. On the train, like running towards our feet. And I was just like, oh, like, do I get up? I finally got a seat. <laughs> what do I do? And so I just, I just sat there. I wasn't too close to him, but I just made sure I watched that pee puddle the whole trip to make sure. And then if someone came over to sit there, I went, watch out. That's pee. You might not want to sit or stand there. And they're like, oh, cool. Thanks. And they'd walk away. Yeah. Which is, see, that's why I say New, New Yorkers, Yorkers look out are, for each other. Yeah. <laughs> that's as rude as you think. We're not as rude as you think. We'll, we'll let you know when there's pee on the ground. You know, who wants that? That was a, the, the weirdest thing that I've seen recently, I that's guess. That's a pretty good one recently. Mm -hmm. There's so many I've seen. I can't even. There's so many. <laughs> Most of them take, took place uh, very late at night. Mm. when tourists wouldn't necessarily be around so i wouldn't worry these all these all sound like horror stories <laughs> like just like <laughs> yeah. i just think it's i've seen like fights i used to work on food trucks and mm. i would end up coming home really late at night like three four in the morning when bars yeah. were letting out and you would just see like wrestle fights on the train that would kind of <laughs> just spill out onto the platform and no one's really like there's no mma moves it's just it's just people just like grabbing each other's belts <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did see someone smoking crack, I'm assuming. Oh, yikes. He put his jacket over his head. Okay. And then there was something that happened. And then there was a smell. Unfortunately, I don't know what crack smells like. Or maybe fortunately, yeah. I don't know what crack smells I would, like. I would hope that's fortunate. So either, either he was smoking crack or he was like soldering some plastic or something. Gotcha. There is definitely like a very pungent smell. I'm assuming it was... Uh, it wasn't like a... It wasn't organic. No, it wasn't incense. <laughs> no. <laughs> he wasn't laying was, up some Nag Champa underneath yeah, his jacket on the There were some chemicals train. going on. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, but like you said, that's not that's not a normal occurrence. Oh, for sure. It doesn't, happen, doing it doesn't happen nearly as frequently as maybe people even think that happens. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, we've lived here for nine and a half years, and I've only seen one person pee on the subway. <laughs> <laughs> that, so. that, that sounds like a, a poster for like a tourism campaign. <laughs> <laughs> we've lived here for nine and a half years, and I've only seen one person pee on the subway. I think that's so a pretty visit. good testament. <laughs> there goes our sponsorship from the Board of Tourism from New York City. Gone as quickly as it can. <laughs> <laughs> I look at it as a positive thing, you know? Yeah, only once. <laughs> only once. But, yeah. So, you're going to see some, I would say, more fun, interesting things on the subway. So come and check it out. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. You'll love it. You'll love it. <laughs> it's like a roller coaster, only the the ride itself isn't scary. It's all the people you're sitting next to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good call. And that's it for this January episode this podcast was recorded in our apartment in the Big Apple, New York City. If you like the podcast, do us a favor and take a minute to rate it and write a review. Contact us and let us know you did, and we'll send you a couple stickers. So subscribe now and follow us on social media so we can keep the conversation going and keep you posted about new episodes. Until next time, I'm Chris. And I'm Chris. And this is Christmas Time in the City. Thank you.